In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate the popular VPN or virtual private network service. I include this now with the basic networking services because so many organizations use this so that their employees can connect remotely to the office or organizational network from a remote location. And that connection is encrypted and secured by modern secure protocols. So let's take a look here. I'm going to start out on my Rock One server on the right. Here we are in the VPN settings inside of Server App. Most of these settings will probably be already set for you and you won't have to change them, but just in case, you might want to double check your DNS name and overtype it with the correct DNS name of your server. This is going to be the DNS name that is used for your server or identifies your server from the outside world. So in my case, it's rock1filmingrocks.com, and that is a good DNS name. At least it thinks it's good because it's got a green dot over here on the far right. Also, we could choose either Layer 2 Tunneling Protocol, that's L2TP, or we could add Point-to-Point -point Tunneling Protocol to the VPN configuration. A shared secret is automatically generated. It's a long series of random symbols, characters, numbers, and so on. If you want to have people set up their own VPN configuration, then you probably don't want something this long and complicated. You can overtype it. I'm going to leave mine with the random string because I am going to save a configuration profile. You can change the range of client addresses. It defaults to 31 of them, and you do this in the editing button. I could reduce that or increase it as necessary. It's a little bit like DHCP. Also, we have our DNS settings. Whatever is in here is probably from when the server was first set up. And if there was an active DHCP service that provided DNS IP addresses, those are probably listed here. You may need to overtype them. I have already put in the DNS entries for my primary and secondary DNS servers. And down here we have the search domains. And in this case, I just have the Foaming Rocks search domain. We can also configure routes, which are kind of like shortcuts. It just basically tells which IP addresses are going to go to which networks and which interfaces. I don't have any of that, so I'm going to leave it out. And I'm going to save off a configuration profile. This is called vpn.mobileconfig. I'm going to save it to my desktop. And we will see this file show up on my desktop over here. Now, I do need to turn on the VPN service. And in order to test it out, there are a few things that I have previously set up. So let's take a look at those. First of all, I have an internal website that I created in my websites service. It's called internalfoamingrocks.com. This is getting a little bit ahead because we haven't really talked about the website service yet. So if you don't understand how to set up a website service, don't worry, that will be covered later. But in this website, we have a very simple web page, and I can demonstrate it with Safari. And there is our secret internal website. So I'm going to close out of that web page. We're viewing that on the server that is serving that web page. And what we'd like to do is have that web service be available outside of our network. Now, how do we know it's private and I'm not just playing around with IP addresses? Well, let's take a look down here in the details for my internal network. And we can see that it has a choice of different IP addresses and one of them is 192.168.4.101. Now that's on a different subnet than the other servers and services I have running so far. So I'm going to save it on that one. And now I just need to go double check that my DNS settings are set up correctly for that internal network. And they are. The internal foamingrocks.com server is listed as a host at 192.168.4.101, which is what we just set for it. And also, we would like to make sure that our actual server here has a network interface that is set up for that. And if I see on my Ethernet 2 interface the correct IP address, which I do, then we are done taking a look at my current settings. So just to sum up, this server, Rock1, has two Ethernet ports. One of them has an internal IP address that's not accessible normally on the local network. And with VPN settings, it is accessible. 
Okay, so let's get these VPN settings over to my other computer. I'm going to use my screen sharing capabilities to just drag it off and copy it. And then I'm going to switch over to my administration computer and simply copy that back in. When you deploy a profile configuration like this for VPNs, it does have that shared secret in there. So you want to deploy this in a somewhat secure manner. But there is another line of defense, as we'll see here, or another line of authentication. So I'm going to double click on that profile. It'll open up inside of System Preferences, inside of the Profiles pane, and ask us to install. We can examine it first. It's OK that it's an unsigned profile at this point. I'm going to go ahead and continue. We can also look at more details. Again, it'll just tell us that it's unsigned. Continuing on, this is where we could put in a username for that particular VPN. I'm going to leave that blank and we'll have to fill it in later. And we'll install. So now if I switch over from the Profiles pane to the Networking pane, we can go in and see that there is a VPN defined. It's down here at the bottom of the list. And we need to really change that. We want it to sort to the top of the list when it's active. So I'm going to set service order, grab that, and move it up to the top. Click OK. And before I apply, I'm going to add in my authentication information. So we'll use Penny's account, which I have previously set up. And for the authentication settings, I do need to put in her password. Okay, one last thing. I do like to have the VPN status in the menu bar. Watch the upper right as I click that. It comes into being on the menu bar, and we can use that to connect, or we can connect from inside here. Let's apply all these changes, and then click Connect. I'm now connected, and Penny can now open up that internal website. So let's demonstrate that. and there is the secret internal website. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking I have played some trick on you that she could get to that all the time without those VPN settings. So, let's reset Safari. It'll have a blank page there. I'll just minimize that for a moment. I will disconnect, bring that web page back up, and type in internalfoamingrocks.com again. And you'll notice that after the progress bar gets over about halfway, it just pauses. It cannot load that web page. We just cannot get to it. So that's, in a nutshell, how the VPN service works. It was a simple demonstration to an internal web page. But of course, many other protocols can be encrypted inside a VPN. We could do file sharing. You could even print to printers or other services as necessary.